Jasmine Sullivan. Ooh. Yeah. So with reality show, I love that you have such a variety of sounds. Yes. Um, and you didn't stick with one producer; you mixed it up. What was the process of determining which producers you worked with for this album? Um, well, first of all, it, there are some producers that I worked with on other albums, which was, of course, Salam Remy, um, Anthony Bell, Chuck Harmony. Um, so I kind of have the motto: if it's not broke, why well, fix it? And I, you know, I love working with them. But with this album, what was different was, um, for the most part, I kind of stayed in Philly all by myself, and um, I got like a bunch of tracks, and um, I just would pick what, tra what tracks I like. And I didn't even know who the producers was on most of them. I just like kind of went with whatever I liked the most, and it just so happened that maybe like five of the tracks were by this this um, this new young guy named um, Key Wayne. People, including myself, are saying that this is your best album yet. So what was it about <laughs> being in Philly that made this album um, well, thank you. Um, I don't know. I think it was very important for me to kind of do things um, more so by myself. Um, I have been on this journey um, with having stopped and having felt like I was learning and growing um, with myself. Um, and I felt like nobody could tell my story or tell this story the way I could. So I, I felt like it was I had to do it by myself. Why did you choose me? Meek Mill for Dumb, um, that was actually a coincidence. I just happened to be working in the studio, and he was next door. And I didn't plan on doing any features on the album, but he came over to the studio and was like, yo, if you got anything, um, I would love to work with you. And I was like, really? Because, you know, he's a hip-hop guy, and I didn't think he even, you know, like liked my music pretty much. But he came in there and, and said he wanted to do something, and I thought of um, Dumb immediately, and it just worked out that way. So, so Hood Love. Very descriptive song. Yes, hood love. Never had a hood love. Um, uh, it, not that hood, <laughs> but there are parts of me in hood love. Like I, I was a ride or die chick. Now I, I was in a relationship uh, with a guy that was not worth me being a ride or die. But I think that all women can relate to just loving somebody so much and like you know just trying to stick it in with them. And that's definitely something that I relate to in the song. It was time to go. How did you know when it was time, like, you know, because you said we've all had relationships. Oh, oh, you know when it was time? oh, well, my relationship got really bad, but um, I don't know. I mean, after you kind of, like, give up everything, you take a break and you kind of give up on something that you dreamed about forever, you kind of, like, you look and be like, this is not it. This is not where I'm supposed to be. You kind of look at, you just you can tell by looking at your surroundings and if things aren't right, then you you know that that the situation isn't right. So that's pretty much how I knew. Like everything was kind of off. So even in Stupid Girl, you're very descriptive. And, you know, on the one hand, you kind of have to let yourself fall to fall in love, but then you don't want to be a stupid girl either. How do you strike the balance, you know, without being jaded, but then also being open to love? Um, well, first of all, with Stupid Girl, that song was uh, one of the personal songs in the album because I was a stupid girl. Um, I talked about before, um, you know, kind of losing yourself in a relationship um, and giving your all. And I kind of, um, when I wrote Stupid Girls and I wrote certain songs on the album, I want women especially to kind of look at that and kind of learn not what not to do. Um, but with me, I'm open because I believe that um, there is love out there and there are good people. I just think that I chose, for whatever reason, the wrong person and I chose to do that. But I feel like once you learn from the situation, you don't have to be fearful about um, anything else that's going to come into your life. So one of the webisodes for a reality show, I saw that you talked about how God played such a big part in you finding yourself again yeah. and finding yourself. Gospel, yeah, I mean, I think I, I I don't know if I would do an album, but I definitely would do a song one day. I started off singing gospel, like, that was my roots. For a long time, I didn't listen to anything else but gospel, like Kimberell, Karen Clark, the Clark Sisters. That's all I listened to. Um, so one day I think that I will, but I feel like I still got a little more to say about these men. I got a little more to get out about it <laughs> before I go there. <laughs> by our 
company. Oh, okay. Um, do you have a favorite Yolanda Adams song? Um, I do, and I have to think about it real quick. Um, oh my gosh, it's slipping my mind, and she kills it too. If my mom was in here, she would tell me. Um, it's slipping my mind, but I just, speaking of Yolanda, I just saw her um, not too long ago at Tyler Perry's, uh, I forget what birthday it was, I'm going to say 45th birthday party, and it was like, it was Yolanda Adams, Mary Mary, um, Jennifer Holliday, uh, um, Stephanie Mills, a bunch of greats, and, and Yolanda came up to me. First of all, Yolanda started the show, ended the show, and y'all know, like, when she sings, she brings the house down. So when she came up to me, she kind of was like, oh, you, I, I love your voice, and you're going to go far. And it was like, you know, it was it was great hearing that from her. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, I, I enjoyed being there. So um, with your bad relationship that you talked about, mm -hmm. do you know if he's heard any of your songs on this album? <laughs> I don't even think about him <laughs> anymore, but I'm sh I'm sure he's listened to it. Um, but you know, I've moved on from the situation, and we're so f removed from each other. Like you know, when <laughs> when you're in such a bad relationship with somebody, when it's time to break away, you know, you know it's bad when y'all just don't talk no more. And that's kind of the situation. Um, um, I wish him all the best. You know, I, I don't have any ill will toward him. I think we both were young, and we were dealing with a lot of things new together and so um i just wish him the best i don't know if he's heard anything though so was he the reason why you took such a long time to release new music um not the reason it took me so long to release but definitely played a part in why um i felt like i needed to take a break and take a step back um it was a lot dealing with my personal life being in shambles and having to you know like smile for the camera and do stuff like that so i i felt like i needed to take a break but um, what took me so long to come back um, was just life. I mean, I just, um, you know, I was just figuring some things out with myself so that when I did come back, I'd be better and stronger. So you evolved style. Well, your style has evolved throughout the years. Oh, okay. How would you describe your style when you first came out versus now? I think it was more like a tomboy chic thing <laughs> that we were going I'm still trying to figure it out but now um I think I'm more like body conscious and now I'm a, a little more confident since I'm older and I'm I'm instead of trying to like cover things up I'm kind of embracing my curves and yeah so that's pretty much it is if, if I feel like I have a nice I don't know but or you know I'm trying to accentuate it and not so much trying to hide it well you look beautiful thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks.